Hello everyone, in this video I'll be demonstrating some of the core features of the Mifos X Android client. I'll be covering 7 topics in this video. The first topic is how to log in and out of the application. The second topic is how to search and view client, group, and account details. The third topic is how to create clients, groups, and centers. The fourth topic is how to add information for a particular client, such as charges, savings accounts, loan accounts, etc. The fifth topic is how to add clients in a group. The sixth topic is how to use the path tracker feature. And the last topic is how to use the offline sync feature. So let's get started. So the first step in using the Mifos X Android client is of course logging in. So once you launch the application, you'll be greeted with the login screen. Here you can enter in your username and your password. You can also view your password by clicking on the eye icon right here and hiding it. If you click the connection settings button right here, you will be shown some more options to log in. Here you have your instance URL. Now remember here, you don't want to include the HTTP or HTTPS prefix. You only want to have the domain name. You can also specify a port and a tenant identifier. Once you have all your information entered in, you can click login. And if your credentials are correct, you should be shown this screen right here. You can set up a passcode to log in, or you can just skip that. And here is the dashboard. Now to log out of the application, you can click the three dots up here in the upper right hand corner and click log out. So the next feature that I'll be demonstrating is how to search and view client, group, and account details. So in your dashboard, if you select this drop down menu and click on clients, you'll be only searching on clients. Here you can enter in a search query and then click the search button. Here you'll be presented with all the results that match your search query. If you want an exact match, then you can check the exact match checkbox. So when you click on a user, you'll be shown some basic account information such as the account number, the activation date, and the office. You can also select these menus here and view their loan accounts, savings accounts, and recurring accounts if they have any. If you click on the three dots at the top, you'll be able to view even more information about the client. Now to search for groups, you can change this drop-down to say groups, and then enter in a query and click search. These are all the different groups that match your query. So if you click on a group, just like with the clients, you'll be presented with some information, and if you click the three dots, you'll see even more information. The next feature that I'll be showing you is how to create different account types. So if you want to create a client, then click on the hamburger menu at the top left of the screen and click clients. Next, you can click the plus icon at the bottom right of the screen and you'll be presented with the create client screen. Here you can enter in information such as their name, their gender, their date of birth, the client type, the client classification, the office in which they are in, and their staff. You can also set whether or not the client is active or not by clicking the client active checkbox. You can also set the date on this. Once all the information is entered in correctly, you can click the submit button at the bottom of the screen. You can also change some other information in the data tables. Once all the information is entered, click save and your client should be created successfully. If it is, then you'll be brought to the client information screen to create a group you can click on the hamburger menu again and click on groups. Then just as with clients, you can click on the plus icon. To create a group, enter in the group name, the office in which they are in, and then an external ID. You can also set here whether the group is active or not. When everything is entered in, click submit, and it should say group saved into database successfully. Now, if you want to create a center, then just as before, you can click on the hamburger menu and click centers, then click the plus icon and enter in a center name, then enter in the office in which they are in and click submit. And it should say center created successfully. Now I'll be showing you how to add in information for a particular client. So there's two ways to get to the client screen. One, if you don't know the name of your client, then you can just click on the clients tab and scroll to the client that you are looking for. The second option is to go to the dashboard and then search for your client and click search. 
Once you find your client, then click on your client and click the three dots at the top right of the screen. If you want to add charges to your client, click on the charges button. And if you don't have any charges available for the client, it will say no charges available for this client. Then you can cl click the plus button and set the name of the charge, the amount, and the due date. Then click save. If everything is right, it will say charge created successfully. And then if you go back to the charges page, you will see the charge listed there. Now to add savings accounts to your client, you can click on the three dots and click add savings account and enter in all the necessary information for that account and then click submit. You can do the same thing when adding a loan account. Just click add loan account, enter in the information and click submit. To manage your documents, click the documents button and here you will see all the documents that have been uploaded to the client. If you want to manage that a particular document then click on the document and you have three options you can either download update or remove the document to add a new document click on the plus button set a name for the document and a description and then click to choose a file once you have your document chosen click upload and it should say that your document got uploaded successfully to upload a signature click on upload signature then write a signature and click the upload button right here. You can also upload a signature from gallery if you have one. It should say signature uploaded successfully. To manage your identifiers, click on identifiers and click plus and here you can add in a specific identifier. To fill out a survey, click survey and then select one of the surveys that are available and then go through the survey and answer that. Finally, to view your notes, click on notes and if there are any notes, you will see them listed here. To add clients in a group, you can either search for your group in your dashboard, or you can go over to the groups tab and click on the group that you want to add a client to. From here, click on the three dots at the upper right of the screen and click group clients. From here, click the plus icon at the bottom right of the screen and enter in the necessary information to create a client. Once all the information is added in correctly, Click the submit button at the bottom of the screen. Then fill out the associated data tables and click save. It should say client created successfully. The next feature that I'll be showing you is how to use the path tracker feature. The path tracker feature allows staff from the head office to see the route and activities of their field staff. To use this feature, click the hamburger menu on the top left of the screen and click path tracker. Here you'll see a list of all the paths of other people. To start recording your path, click the GPS icon at the top right of the screen. If you get a prompt asking for the device's location, click allow. You might need to click the icon once more. If the permissions were given successfully, you should see a square at the top of the screen. This means that the application is tracking your path. Once you're finished tracking your path, click the square at the top of the screen once again. It should say your location submitted successfully. Now, if you scroll all the way down to the list, you should see your path at the bottom. The final topic that I'll be demonstrating in this video is how to use the offline sync feature. To toggle offline mode, swipe from the left of the screen or click the hamburger menu at the top left and turn the offline mode switch on. Once this is on, you can use the application as you normally would, such as creating clients, groups, and centers. Once you have made your changes offline, swipe from the left and go to the offline sync tab of the menu. Here you'll see all the changes that you made offline. Once you see all of them correctly displayed, turn off the offline mode switch. Then click on each individual square here and click sync. If the information was entered correctly, it should say all clients have been synced. Repeat this process for all other changes that you made offline. So everyone, that's going to end this demonstration video on the Mifos X Android client. To recap, I covered seven topics. The first is how to log in and out of the application. The second is how to search and view client, group, and account details. The third is how to create client group and centers. The fourth is how to add specific information for a particular client. The fifth topic is how to add clients in a group. The sixth topic is how to use the path tracker feature. And the seventh topic is how to use the offline sync feature.